Before pharaohs were buried in sky-high pyramids, they were buried in short, flat structures known as mastabas. Mastabas are one of the oldest monuments in the world. These structures, which have preserved ancient Egyptian culture for over 4,000 years, are still relevant today and will no doubt continue to be for many more years. Today on Crunch, we'll be talking about the earliest tombs in Egypt and their evolution from one dynasty to another. The Earliest Tombs During the first Nakata period, a prehistoric era in Egypt that spanned from 4000 to 3600 BC, the Egyptians buried their dead in oval-shaped pits in the desert. These graves were unmarked and unpartitioned. Hence, the dead person and their belongings were buried side by side and without security. In the coming years, Egyptians began to build superstructures over these pit graves, making them less exposed. They referred to this new grave structure as Perjet, which literally means House of Eternity. And as such, the graves were built to be enduring structures that could house the dead for eternity. When viewed from a distance, Perjet appeared like a long rectangular bench on the desert sand. For this reason, Egyptologists began to refer to them as Mastaba, an Arabic word for bench. Mastaba served as tombs for the royals and elites of Egypt for many years and were used as templates for constructing more grand funeral structures. Exploration of the Mastabas The earliest Mastabas were made from mud bricks with a low resistance to harsh weather conditions. For example, most of the Mastabas built in Abydos were made from mud bricks and have degraded over time. Fortunately, some Mastabas in Giza, Maidum, and Saqqara were built using stone and therefore they have endured harsh weather. Mastaba of Nefermat, M16 M16 is the burial place of Nefermat I and his wife Atet. Its exterior was built with mud brick but its interior is lined with limestone, which explains why it's still standing after so many years. This mastaba is famous for its beautiful wall paintings, which are some of the most impressive paintings from the Old Kingdom. To the east of the mastaba are two small separate chapels, one for Nefermat and the other for Atet. Each chapel contains an elaborate false door and the beautifully decorated chapel walls portray hunters, fishermen, and farmers going about their work. According to archaeologists, the wall designs were made by sculptors, who carved their designs into the plastered wall and painted the incisions. Perhaps the most beautiful painting in the Mastaba is the sea known as the Maidum Geese in Atet Shrine. It is pretty remarkable how most of these artworks still have their essence centuries after they were painted. Mastaba of Rahotep M6 M6 is the Mastaba of Rahotep and his wife Nofret. Like First Dynasty Mastabas, the exterior of M6 is decorated with Serac, the palace frontage design. Inside are two small chapels, one for Rahotep and the other for his wife. These chapels were sealed off for many years, so their contents were greatly preserved. In the Shrine of Rahotep, there is a false door on which the titles King's Son and Priest of Heliopolis were inscribed. The chapels also contain beautifully painted statues of Rahotep and his wife. Rahotep was portrayed to have reddish-brown skin and short black hair, and Nofret was shown to have creamy white skin. These statues complement ancient Egyptian art, which commonly portrays men as having darker skin tone than women. Tomb of Khufu Kaf G7 130-140 Khufu Kaf I was a priest who archaeologists believe was the son of Khufu and Queen Hanutsin. G7 130-140 is a double mastaba, built for the prince and his wife Nefret Kaf. The interior of the mastaba is rather simple. The only decorated part of the shaft portrays two large images of Khufu Kaf with his mother and son. The north chapel, G7130, is dedicated to Khufu Kaf's wife, and the south, G7140, to the prince himself. In the southern chapel, there is a depiction of Anubis, the god of tombs. The walls of the main chamber bear illustrations of Khufu Kaf and his wife receiving offerings. Archaeologists discovered miniature beer jugs inscribed with offering spells, the same ones inscribed on the walls. There is no proof that anyone was buried in this mastaba, and this supports the speculations that Kufukov became king after his father, let go of his father's name, and changed his name to Khafri. The Tomb of Perneb 
In the 5th dynasty, a palace administrator Perneb built a mastaba in Saqqara. This mastaba was built with limestone and its interior was decorated with colorful paintings and hieroglyphics. In 1913, this mastaba was purchased from the Egyptian government. A group of archaeologists from America worked together with Egyptians to dismantle the tomb, and it was transported to the US from Saqqara that same year. The mastaba was reassembled at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and since 1916, it has been on display in the museum's collection of Egyptian art. Why were mastabas built? According to ancient Egyptian religion, death was not the end of a person's existence. Rather, it marked the beginning of the journey from the world of the living to the afterlife. For this journey to be completed, it was important that the deceased soul was preserved for eternity, and ancient Egyptians believed the soul could live only if the body were kept intact. Before the burial, the body was embalmed and mummified, fortifying it against degradation. However, it wasn't just decay the body had to be protected from. The body also had to be fed and preserved from corruption and predatory attacks. Compared to pit graves which were covered up with sand or even just a mat, mastabas were built as a more complex and effective method for protecting and preserving the bodies of the dead. They protected the deceased and their belongings from unnatural threats as well like tomb robbers and scavenging animals. Mastabas were the first burial structures to be erected and at first were made from dried mud bricks. Their rather complex structure resulted from the large amounts of time and labor channeled into their construction, and thus could only be afforded by prominent members of Egyptian society. In the pre-dynastic and early dynastic eras, only royals and high official members were buried in mastabas, while local Egyptians continued to be buried in pit graves. From the Third Dynasty, however, kings began constructing pyramids for their internments, and non-royal use of mastabas began and continued for over a thousand years. Structure of Mastabas Historians suggest that the bench-like structure of the mastabas was adapted from Mesopotamian architecture, since both civilizations constructed similar buildings at the time. Mastabas had underground and above-ground structures, each constructed very differently. The above-ground structure of mastabas has a trapezoid layout, with the base wider than the top. They have flat rectangular roofs and are at least 30 feet tall. The length of a mastaba is about four times its width. At first, mastabas were built using mud bricks, but stronger building materials like stones were later used. Mastabas were built along the north-south axis, which according to ancient Egyptian religion was essential for access to the afterlife. Typically, the above-ground structure of a mastaba was built with an open space for a small offering chapel and a compulsory false door. The false door is an unrealistic model of a door comprising several elements, including door jams, a lintel, and a stella. These elements were all carved from the same material, either wood or stone, and each element bore the name and title of the deceased. As aforementioned, one of the things that was important for the sustenance of the body of the dead was that it was fed. The significance of this false door was that it allowed the dead person's soul to accept food offerings made to the deceased and feed it to the body. The priest and the deceased's other family members offered food to the soul of the dead in the offering chapel. The purpose of this food was to maintain the deceased's soul to ensure that they continue to exist in the afterlife. The food materials were offered on a table in the center of the chapel, and a steel, which bore inscription of the name or picture of the deceased, was placed on the other side of the table. The offering chapel was located across a special room in the mastaba called the serdab. The serdab is a hidden and sealed chamber. It contained anything that could comfort the deceased in the afterlife, such as beer, food, and clothes. The walls were often decorated with scenes showing daily activities the deceased person was expected to perform. These activities mainly had to do with their journey into the afterlife. The Serdab also contained an object called the Ka Statue. The Ka Statue was a figurine of the deceased person which housed a fragment of the dead person's soul, the Ka. In the wall of the Serdab adjacent to the Offering Chapel, there is a small hole through which the deceased soul can move to and fro the Offering Chapel. 
The hole was not meant for viewing the statue, instead it was carved to allow the fragrance of incense from the offerings and the spells chanted during rituals to reach the statue, and by extension the deceased's soul. The burial chambers were located deep into the mastabas and lined with wood. The walls of the burial chamber of royals were beautifully decorated with paintings and hieroglyphics texts depicting afterlife scenarios, as well as events that occurred during the deceased's lifetime. Apart from the decorations, the burial chambers also contain the sarcophagus, typically made of granite. The sarcophagus usually had inscriptions of its occupant's name and sometimes funerary spells from the Book of the Dead. The Evolution of Mastabas During the pre-dynastic period and the first few dynasties of the Old Kingdom, mastabas were the standard burial structures in Egypt. Dynasty after dynasty, the architecture of the mastabas changed and for the most part, each mastaba was an upgraded version of the ones before it. In the first dynasty, mastaba designs were similar to a house's. The substructure was very shallow and there was a central room around which the other compartments were built. This central room was the burial chamber which contained the sarcophagus, and the surrounding rooms were set apart for offerings and rituals. The first dynasty mastabas had plastered and painted exteriors. They were decorated with serak, the palace frontage design. Serak was present on the walls of the contemporary royal palace and the walls of the burial chambers of kings in this period. In the second dynasty, however, the exterior of the mastabas had a much simpler design. The second dynasty mastabas were slightly different from the first dynasties. They had more space in the open court and had two false doors. The substructure was located deeper underground and connected to the substructure with a stairway and an inclined shaft. Hence, they were called the Stairway Mastabas. The stairs led to the burial chamber and the storage room. The first dynasty Mastabas also had storage rooms, but unlike the Stairway Mastabas, they were located above ground. By the 4th and 5th dynasties, the Mastabas were built with vertical shafts and bigger chapels and serdops. In addition to interior chapels, architects built exterior chapels on the east end of the Mastabas. The burial chamber, initially located in the center of the mastaba, was built below the south end of the structure. During the fourth dynasty, Egyptians began to put protective measures in place to deter tomb robbers. After the burial, they started to fill the shafts with large collections of small stones or large blocking stones. By the fifth dynasty, the mastabas looked more luxurious and complex than the earlier ones. The burial shaft and burial chamber were carved deeper into the bedrock and a stairway led up to the roof from the burial shaft. From the third dynasty, the pharaohs began to construct pyramids for themselves, and in no time only non-royal burials happened in mastabas. However, only high-class Egyptians were buried in them. During the middle class, another burial option resurfaced, the rock-cut tombs. By the time of the New Kingdom, mastabas had been superseded by pyramids and rock-cut tombs. What other weird secrets would you want to hear about the ancient civilizations of our past? Thanks for watching Crunch History, and as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting facts about the past.